Uh, welcome back guys. Um, today was a slightly unexpected video. Um, I was out for a ride on Sunday. Um, went up to the lovely Norfolk coastline and uh, halfway home I had a really weird sensation coming from the back of the bike. Uh, felt like I was, felt like someone was just shaking the rear of the bike. Wasn't sure what it was. Uh, I regularly check my bike over. I think I, I clean it at least once a week, despite what it looks like at the moment. Um, check the bearings, check everything else. So we've gone down a really rough, bumpy road, and I think the sort of seven or eight hours of riding we were doing, plus, uh, well, maybe something to do with the uh, way we were riding, which was quite characterful, um, has led to this. I don't know if you can see this. So this, when this happened, I was 60 miles away from home. Um, the I do have breakdown cover, but it was a Sunday evening. My girlfriend had to get home from work, um, and I did the standard thing of googling: is it okay to ride or ride on ruined bearings? Uh, Saw one guy said it's fine, so it must be fine. Um, so yeah, I rode home at about 20 to 30 mile an hour the entire way. Uh, on the side of the road, hazards on, with my girlfriend following me on her bike, with the hazards on. Uh, my mate, who was with us at the time as well, he was following us with his hazards on. Um, so, it was a fun ride. So, we need to change that. Uh, today I'm gonna, I've never done this before. Um, I've watched many YouTube videos, um, and I've bought myself some tools. So hopefully it can't be too hard. But, let's get going, shall we? So, first thing we need to do, obviously to take the rear wheel off, um, most of you will know roughly how to do this. I mean, first of all, you need to loosen off your chain adjusters, and then after you've done that, you'll be able to um, get the chain off easier and things like that. Just takes the pressure off the wheel as well. So that's that side. Other side. So here's obviously our it's a, it's a torque wrench where I use it as a brake bar as well because it works quite well, it's quite, it's quite long so it works really well for a breaker as well. So that's obviously that I'm done, um, which is the actual. Now, I should have said before I started, but what you do need to do before you do this is get the wheel off the floor and support the bike's weight. Now I'm going to be doing the front and rear wheel. I'll, only realistically needs to show you one because it's the same process but on the front. By getting the rear wheel off the floor it allows you to take, like the bike is supported, it's not going anywhere. So once I take this wheel out, it's not going to suddenly fall over. Easiest way to do that, you've got centre stands, if you've got one. You've got the paddock stand bobbins. Um, so you can put the paddock stand in, lift it up, that way you can do the same for the front. If you've got neither of those things, first of all I advise you doing getting one of them. It, it saves so much time on oiling and maintaining your chain. Uh, and if not, you can get the lift that goes in the middle, which basically jacks your bike up in the middle. Or there are quite expensive full bike lifts, but you're talking quite a lot of money. So yeah, let's get this out. that I'll obviously take out. There's your spacer bar which will show you your adjustments when you're adjusting your chain. And you want to keep an eye on how these are actually come off as well. If you take a little bit of weight off the wheel, I try and put my foot underneath it, you can normally get it out. But sometimes you need to use another bar. find is there's there'll be obviously another one on the other side sometimes there's another spike um, another washer not on this bike so put that in there like that 
Now, I'm not done with that yet. You're at a complete wrong place. So you want to lift your caliper off and make sure that's clear. So once your caliper's clear, next thing you want to do is you wheel the wheel, push the wheel forward a little bit. You'll be able to get the chain off. There you go. Then just rest it over the um, swing arm. So once you've rested it over that a bit, you should be able to pull your wheel out. whether you notice that then but the spaces that come out now these are filthy but you got a left one there and a right one here right <laughs> right so that riding home as much its way through the seal and the bearings absolutely destroyed in there let's put this on here so this is the other thing I was going to do again keep in mind which way it goes so you've got your spacer, other spacer, nut, washer, nut, not nut, your measurement guide, washer, and other nut. So that's that. Now, I don't know if you can see that, that bearing is absolutely toast. What I'm going to do, right, I'm going to take you up onto the bench now, should have put gloves on. Key thing. I've got gloves up the top. So first things first, before we get started, we've got uh, a full bearing kit here. So we've got front and rear bearings. You've got the one thing I didn't realize, which was slightly annoying, is the rear actually has three bearings. So oh, look at the state of my hands. Um, so we've got the two standard bearings in the wheels, and then there's a sprocket carrier bearing, and then the front's just got two. Uh, we've got two dust seals there, and we've got the other two, the dust seals for the other bearings. So that's fine. So we'll put those to one side for a moment. And the only other thing I've got here is a bearing puller set. Uh, the reason I've gone for this is the there's a couple of ways of removing bearings. You can use a puller pusher set and you can use the manual set, which is basically just getting a drift and hitting it from the other side. And it looks very caveman-esque. So with this kit, uh, so this goes into these bits here. I don't know if you can see that. These bits here grab onto the bearing from inside. You screw that down and then you essentially wind it out and it pulls the bearing out. Hopefully anyway. Bearing puller kits are ludicrously expensive and I didn't really want to have to pay out for them. So that was only 30 pounds. So I'm hoping we'll be able to do this essentially on the cheap because I don't want, I don't really like the idea of having to pay someone to do it for me. So first things first, this is your sprocket. Wiggle that off, give it a shake. So that's what your sprocket looks like. And there is the first bearing, which actually looks okay. There's a little bit of crunchiness in there, so I will replace it anyway. Uh, these are the Kush drives. Um, now, I'm pretty sure no one actually knows what these do, but I think they're just essentially cushion the, the immediate drive from the chain turning the wheel going into the actual wheel, so you're, it's not metal on metal. Pretty sure that's it. Have a look, because sometimes there's a circlip that goes around the edge of this. That noise you can hear there is a spacer in the middle. Um, so, as you, I don't know if you saw on the other camera, but I'll show you the other side. Actually, let's show you the other side now. Uh, I mean, that shows you that the bearing's buggered. There's all parts of whatever that is there. Without putting the wheel back down, let's see if I can clear that up, because I do not want that going anywhere. I mean, I'm going to replace the tire anyway, but I don't want that going anywhere near. So if I turn this over, I mean, you can see that is the bearing there. You can see all the balls like the, from the bearing in there and the, yeah, it's just absolutely toasted. Generic blocks of wood. Let's do the non-buggered side first, shall we? So what you wanna do here is just prop the wheel up so you're not damaging the disc and everything on there. 
no circlet from what I can tell. So let's give this a go, shall we? Again, never done this, so not sure how it's gonna go. Balls coming out the other end. Bring itself undone. Oh, undo itself. Oh, that's nice and tight. Space. Jesus Christ, man. Look at the mess. Now, I might actually be able to get that. Used to be the bearing. Uh, so, for anyone that's interested, um, this is what. So, this is what a motorcycle wheel bearing is meant to look like. It's uh, lovely and shiny. It moves very smoothly. There's no noise from it. And the one that's just come out the other side of the wheel looks like that. Uh, pretty sure that might be why it was making a weird noise and not riding very smoothly. And the seal is absolutely toasted as well. Like it's all bent. So that's that one side. Um, I'm going to still try and get this out. Let's get that out of the way, shall we? Uh, I'm gonna try and get this side out. It's being a bit of a pain in the ass. I can't get it out with my expensive 30 pound tool. So I'm gonna try the old fashioned way, heating it up using a drift and a hammer and whacking the living daylights out of it and hope that works. So. Let's give it a go, shall we? That'll do for now. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this on the floor so it doesn't make so much racket. <laughs> this is all the dust that's come out <laughs> come out of the bearing. Right, maybe a little bit further apart. Right, and as you can see in there, you can see the bearing right at the bottom down there. Actually, I don't know whether you can see that. That is worrying. How much there's a ridge there? I don't know whether that's old bearing or not. It looks like it could be. Uh, drift hammer. Now you want to work this out. So what I'm doing is I'm swapping sides so it works out evenly. Slowly, slowly coming out. Pop. There we go. <laughs> there is the old bearing. One thing you must do is make sure you match up the new bearings with the old bearings. Now, that looks, that looks like that, doesn't it? Right, so things I've got to worry about. This is now smooth enough. There are some gouges out of it. But um, maybe I can smooth that out somehow. And then this side, I think, yeah, that is still, don't know if you can see that in there, that is still the outer of that bearing, which is very worrying. I don't really know how I'm gonna get that out. This is going to be very difficult to do. Because there's no inner lip of that at all. Welcome back everyone. Uh, some time has elapsed since my last part of this video. Um, what's that? It's actually been, what, three days? So part of the problem was the bearing puller I bought broke, which is fun. It's alright, I got a refund. I got one of the bearings out, which I think I showed you in the last video. 
which one was this one, this one was out of the other side, and this one, the problem with, because it had all crushed, uh, all the ball bearings had fallen out, the inner ring had fallen out, there was no way to pry it out. Uh, I tried heating it with a blowtorch, I tried uh, hitting it from the other side, I tried various different tools that sort of make a kind of bearing puller, didn't work. What I actually ended up doing for the last couple of evenings, I have, well, I'll show you. I've done that. <laughs> so this was the old outer bear, outer of the bearing. Um, so I, as you can see here, essentially what I did was use a Dremel and a cutting disc to cut away at this to weaken it. And then I jammed some screwdrivers around the side, which essentially like a chisel, but I didn't. The chisels I've ordered are gonna turn up tomorrow. Hammered some screwdrivers in the side and it bent this in, which gave me enough leverage to be able to hit it out from the other side. It took hours, and I'm talking absolute hours. Um, I've just actually apologized to my neighbors for the colossal amount of noise I've been making. Not him, because he's a twat, but the ones, the nice ones. So now that is out, I've, there are some gouges in this, which I've been going at with some soft, uh, some fine grit sandpaper. Oh, so you can see it's actually a hell of a lot better than it was. Um, so now we can actually carry on. So we've got both the bearings out of the main wheel. Next thing I need to do is get the bearing out of this. Same sort of technique, pressing this on there. Screwdriver underneath the bearing, uh, bearing seal, sorry, should I say. You should be able to work it up. Come on, there you go. There you go, so if you put it in and then you start twisting it and it should come up. So that's that. Cool, look how rusty that is, man. Disgusting. Disgusting. Look at all this shit, man. So. Oh. so what I've just done, Took the sprocket off and the reason for that is the way you take the bearing out where is the bearing it's down here oh that's really hot uh get on get onto that in a minute so the way you take this out is you flip it over on two blocks of wood like so uh, ow. like that that is underneath here and then you use drift or something similar it needs to be something solid because otherwise it'll bend and you basically tap out with a hammer either side now you want to do it either side because when it comes out if you just hit one side it just spin like that so if you tap it out this side this side this side this side this side and then it eventually come out now basically as you can probably tell so you take the sprocket off because if you if you imagine that is like that if you lay the wood, lay it on that, it's gonna bend your sprocket. So I take the sprocket off first, and then yeah, you tap it out either side. Now this is actually the same size as the hole that you're hitting it out of. So best thing to do, one of these beasts. So all that is, is like, it's sort of a blowtorch. That's all you're doing, and then you're heating it up around the edge like that, just for, all the way around for about 30 seconds to a minute. Um, and then the reason you do that, see, key stage one science, hot metal expands, cold metal contracts. So if you heat the outside of it, again, don't touch it because I'm a moron. Uh, if you heat the outside of it, it'll expand, which makes the bearing easier to push out. I think I need to get this center pin out to put it in there. That is still very hot. So I'm gonna leave that to cool down for a few minutes and then I'll come back to that. So in the meantime, what I will do is start fitting the bearings to the, the actual wheel itself. This is the space that goes inside. One side's quite scuffed up, but I think with some light gray sandpaper, we might be able to Yeah, that takes that takes out the uh, scratches quite nicely. So I'm just going to rub that down all the way around before I put that in. You can heat up the hub again. Again makes it a little bit easier. What I'm gonna do is, I've got some grease somewhere. Multi-purpose grease. 
left a little bit of grease in the hole a little bit of lubrication helps just lube your ring up <laughs> and what you want to do with this is work it in the same way you took it out you need it to be worked down at the same pace so that's that what you can do you can get actual bearing pushes but you only want to touch the outside ring because otherwise it ends up getting destroyed so other thing you can do yep Hear how that noise has now got deeper. That means the bearings at the bottom. All good? So you can actually clean that up. Still moves lovely and smoothly. Just a little bit of that to clean that up. There you go. One lovely fresh bearing seated down the bottom. Happy days. And then essentially you repeat that same process for all the other sides. Now do bear in mind that sprocket the bearings will differ in size so you'll obviously need now that was the biggest um socket set that i actually had so i'm going to need you can buy seating kits so like bearing seaters that's why you obviously got the cush drives which go in there you want the rubber so this rubber bridge bit at the top well you can't physically put it in the other way and if you can well done and then obviously once we fitted the bearing in this, oh, that is still hot. Uh, once we fitted the bearing in this, we can obviously seat that in the middle as well. And you're good. Repeat that on both sides. Remember to put your spacer in the middle. That's one thing you must do. Because the other thing as well is you need to make sure that's centered when you bang in the other side. Right, that's now done. So you can see bearings done. Now one thing you will notice is these bearings don't turn unless your spacer is lined up. So if you think about it, if your, how am I gonna show you this? If this is say your spacer, obviously it's a lot longer and this is your bearing. If it's off center, you're gonna have two problems. One, you're not gonna be able to get your axle through there. Don't know if you can see that. You're not gonna be able to get the axle through there. And also it won't spin. So because your space is gonna to be touching the inside of the hub um, and also the outside of your bearing. Now, if it's held like that on one side and say that on the other side, the bearing is not centered, so it's not gonna spin. So getting it in the middle there will allow the actual bearing to move itself. This is my sprocket bearing, not sprocket carrier bearing. There's one behind there, which you might be able to see through the middle of that. Well, you probably can't. And then other side again. I'll get it, there you go, it turns there. Oh, two fingers in, makes it work. <laughs> the wheel on is literally the reverse of taking off. Surprise, surprise. So, lovely and organized from before, so I know this side comes off this. So I've got the nut, washer, your unit that your uh, tool that shows your distance, you've got your spacer, other spacer, other measuring. I'm gonna leave that on there because there's not really much point. What I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna clean this up, clean these up and re-grease them. So, on rag down. Don't get too excited here, ladies. Well, probably more gents. So that, and then these. The reason I clean these is for a few reasons. One, they'll be less noisy when you put them back together. If you clean everything when you take your bike apart, it's then a lot cleaner. It's easier to take apart next time you're gonna take it apart. But also it's one of those things where if you clean it and you check it over, it gives you time to check it over. It gives you time to actually inspect everything to make sure it's as it should be. And also, it's less likely to go wrong. There you go, that's it. Ironically, I did actually put gloves on today, 
but as you can as you might be able to see outside it is absolutely roasting i think it's like 27 28 degrees today so i put them on and i just started sweating immediately my hands were just water couldn't work with them and what i will do as well a little bit little bit of lube on the shaft you don't they don't need to be spotless but cleaner than they came out so that is the axle two spacers and then you put them straight back on the floor and uh, ruin it <laughs> Right, that's on. Chain on. With this, you might need to spread your brake discs. Again, something else you should clean every time you take them off. Like every time I change my brake pads, I give the caliper a very good clean. Yeah, spacer in, spacer in this side. There you go. It's all a bit of a juggling act to get it all in, like that. Right, so that is in there. So that noise is because, I don't know if you can see that, it's actually hit that side, so I just need to lift this side of the wheel up a bit. There you go, all the way through. Washer. No. I will do a proper video on this on how to adjust your chain but essentially in your manual you will have a distance of how far how, how much movement this chain will have so if you see i pull this wheel back which is all these are doing there's less movement if i push it in there's a lot more movement so it's all the chain spacers do all this uh chain adjustments doing i see quite a few people like riding along with their chains flapping down here and one of my friends said he actually God, he forced a guy at his work to adjust his chain because it was that bad um, and the guy said it was basically like a new bike or felt like a new bike so I just need to adjust the chain and tighten these back up before I go any further I'm going to change my tires so I'm not going to actually do this up properly but essentially all you need to do look in your manual and you should have this will probably say something along the lines of 20 to 30 mil of distance which is from the bottom to the top so if it's got more than that, you need to tighten it up a little bit. And if it's got less than that, like if your chain is rock hard, you need to loosen it off a bit, which is screwing it that way. Do the axle nut up to full torque, then you're done. And that's basically how, very dodgy guide on how I would change bearings. Um, if possible, get someone to do it for you. If Also, if possible, if you've got the, the spare money, get yourself an actual kit, because I think... The one I bought being cheap wasn't the greatest. You can still do it the other way, but you just risk messing up the bearings. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.